Hi right, guys, it was supposed to be a beautiful sunny day here in the end times in Paradise in Garfield, Texas, but no, we just get another gloomy, gray, yuck, depressing day here in uh, the end times on Wednesday, December 19th, 2018, so the little dog and I need to head to the mechanic to start working on this goddamn busted door lock. I think I'm finally going to get a new tire from all that shit that I dealt with last summer. I've been driving around on this piece of shit tire. Might as well get an oil change and all that other crap. Probably getting ready to spend 500 fucking dollars. <sighs> anyway, before I head off to deal with all that bullshit with my gas sucking truck, I need to do what I do every day. And that's try to bring you my, uh, we are so fucked doomer headline of the day. So where I'm going to go, instead of the mainstream media, <coughs> I actually might start making this my regular Wednesday We Are So Fucked doomer headline. I've, me I've mentioned this outfit before called oilprice.com. Oilprice.com, their newsletter they send out each week called the Intelligence Report. <laughs> Yes, the intelligence report for fossil fuel investors, which should be called the stupidity report. <coughs> but anyway, if you want to, you know, understand uh, your enemies, basically, and oilprice.com, I, I, I mean, in all seriousness, they really do uh, do a good job of, uh, of playing both sides of the field to let investors know it, you know, you might want to think twice about this. And uh, so this is where, if you want to stay abreast of the oil markets and the other fossil fuel and energy markets, you can go on oilprice.com and get this uh, newsletter sent to your email box every week. So I'm just going to sit here and uh, they do it kind of like Manga Bay, you know, they, they do a little s summary of the articles and then you can link to the full article. So it, you can decide which one of these, which one of these is the We Are So Fucked Doomer headline of the day. Let's start with new discoveries up in 2018. The oil and gas industry is expected to log the largest set of new discoveries this year since 2015. Discovered resources stand at about 8.8 .8 billion barrels of oil equivalent and could close out the year at about 9.4 billion barrels according to Rystead Energy. Quote, quoting Palzar Shinga, uh, senior analyst for Rystead Energy, quote, we expect this discovery trend to continue into 2019 with many promising high impact wells targeting vast potential. All right. Right next to that one, <clears throat> new oil and gas projects jump in 2019. The number of new oil and gas projects to move forward next year could jump five-fold from 2015 levels, according to a report from Wood McKenzie. At the same time, uh... Blah, blah. <coughs> At the same time, industry spending could remain mostly flat. At mostly flat, at only four hundred twenty-five billion dollars. Yes, that sounds like some flat spending to me. Many oil and gas companies have cut costs and can do more with less. <coughs> yes, but. Wood Mac says that the industry is still far short 
of the $600 billion in spending needed to meet future demand, meaning future demand for fossil fuels. What's going on in the oil field services sector? Oil field services look to rebound. Offshore oil field services and contractors have seen four consecutive years of declining revenues, but could bounce back in 2019. More than 100 projects could move forward next year and an estimated $210 billion could be spent on offshore oil field services next year, according to Reistad. Quote, the offshore service market is like a super tanker. It takes time to accelerate. The uptick in new projects in 2017, 2018, and now 2019 will be enough to turn revenue growth positive to mid to single digits as offshore capex is set to increase due to recent years of capital commitments. Yep, yep, yep. Then of course, uh, what is actually going on with the price of oil? Here, where oil is, where price a gallon of a gas, I paid a dollar eighty-seven, a dollar eighty-seven for uh, <coughs> gas in Austin, Texas yesterday. Oil prices crash to one-year low. Oil prices plunged by more than four percent on Monday and the sell-off continued in early trading on Tuesday, pushing WTI down, that's West Texas, uh, down below $48 per barrel. The proximate cause this time was a report of rising U.S. oil inventories at a time when global equities were sharply down. Um, Speaking of, uh, of uh, global equities and all of that, what is going on in the stock market that oil investors are looking at this week? Stock market turmoil. U.S. equities fell sharply on Monday and the sell-off continued in Asia on Tuesday. Concerns about slowing growth in China and elsewhere are starting to magnify investor anxiety. There you go. <coughs> now this one, I, I really need to study this more. ConocoPhillips uh, now backs carbon tax. ConocoPhillips will reportedly join ExxonMobil in putting money into a lobbying effort backing a carbon tax. The oil majors have huge stakes in natural gas, which stands to benefit from a light carbon tax. So uh, the, the, this is, you know, I would really like to find out the truth uh, behind these mainstream media headlines about why would an oil company uh, support a carbon tax? obviously, uh, because they will benefit from it. Uh, and I guess the connection, which I don't understand myself, is via their natural gas, uh, for whatever reason. I'll dig around deeper in that. What is uh, going on with the shithole country of Qatar? I guess it's, I, um, I don't know how you pronounce it. I'm going to call it Qatar. Qatar to invest $20 billion in U.S. energy. Qatar said on Sunday that it would spend $20 billion on U.S. energy assets over the next five years. One of the initiatives will be to revive <coughs> the Golden Pass liquid natural gas terminal in 
uh, Texas is um, anyway meanwhile Qatar also plans on buying three offshore oil blocks in Mexico there you go good for Qatar uh, speaking of speaking of Mexico Mexico hopes to boost its oil and gas production by 50 percent Mexico's government aims to boost oil and gas output by 50 percent over the next six years. The new government wants to revive Pemex, which is the national oil company, and has planned to increase the state-owned oil company's exploration budget by 10 percent. Um, Speaking of exploration, uh, what's Exxon up to in the good old state of Texas? Exxon Mobil becomes the top Permian driller. Exxon Mobil was late to the game, but it now has the most drilling rigs of anyone in the Permian Basin. The development highlights the lure of the Permian as well as the shale-focused strategies deployed by the oil majors. But we're going to uh, end up with our friends at Enbridge. Enbridge completes takeover of Spectra Energy Partners. Enbridge completed its $3.3 billion acquisition of Spectra Energy, creating one of the largest midstream companies in North America. And then they refer you to some more. Just real quick, how about Asian liquid natural gas demand to quadruple quadruple with by, by 2030 here is Maduro accused Venezuela guy accuses US official of plotting Venezuela invasion uh, Paris is burning over climate change taxes is America next well, with a dollar eighty-seven a gallon gas, I don't think America's next. But we're going to end up in the shithole country of Canada, where the Alberta government to construct another WCS, whatever that means, processing refinery. Another, what it means, I'm sure, is some sort of oil sands refinery. So there you go. Uh, pick your poison. Pick your we are so fucked headline of the day. But uh, I got to wrap this up. Uh, do I have time to change shirts and do a chronicle of the collapse over there and collapse chronicles? I think we're going to go over there and read Dark Days. A science writer struggles to stay upbeat in a troubled time. Yeah, struggles to stay upbeat a bit. Anyway, get out there and invest in an oil company while you still can. We're so fucked, people. Bye, guys.